There's a place in the Bible when Jesus tells his students that with faith the size of a small seed, this mulberry tree will be uprooted and planted in the heart of the sea at your command. This mulberry tree by the creek behind our church fell down a while ago. I'm not sure why. It doesn't really matter. It's overgrown with briars and brambles. There are a few choices. Give up on the tree and cut it to pieces for firewood. Cut back the overgrowth and give the tree a chance. Faith is not the same as assurance. Faith is better understood as choosing to live based on what we want to be true. Another word for faith is trust. I find it helpful to think about faith in God like this. I can't prove Jesus is right, but I choose to live like Jesus because I trust that Jesus is right. Thinking about faith in this way shifts our mindset away from feeling the need for assurance towards making choices about how to think and what to do. It's okay to wrestle with doubt. If we stop doubting altogether, then we've moved away from genuine faith. If the way we think and act is based on knowledge about God that we can prove, then we're not living by faith. And there's nothing wrong with that. Living by faith, however, means we cannot prove what we believe to be true, but we choose to think about our place in the world based on where we place our trust. Let's go back to the mulberry tree. At first glance, the evidence points to one way of thinking. The tree was uprooted and fell down. Now it's covered in briars and brambles. Based on what I see, the tree looks dead. So I believe it's dead. We begin cutting away the overgrowth and notice more than I did before. I see that there are smaller branches that seem to be growing upward towards the sunlight. Now, at second glance, the evidence points to a different way of thinking than when I originally saw the tree. Now, the evidence suggests that the tree is not altogether dead. There's new growth sprouting from the fallen tree. The tree was uprooted and fell next to the water. It didn't plant itself in the heart of the sea. Instead, the life that was left in the tree when it fell accomplished what it was designed to do. Enough living cells in the tree absorbed nutrients from the ground, soil, sun, and air to trigger a different chain reaction. Now the tree is showing signs of new life. The thing I find most interesting about all of this is no one forced the tree to do that. The code that's written into the DNA of every cell in this particular mulberry tree responded to the change in the tree's condition in a way that gives the tree new life. There are stories over the last 70 years of this church's existence that suggest something similar has happened in the past and is happening again today for whatever reason as a result of forces outside of the church and at times within the church things fall down or so they seem then something else happens a person or group of people choose to think and act according to a particular mindset they trust that they're part of nurturing the new life that's already beginning to break through and flourish in spite of the evidence that suggests otherwise. Three years ago, the infamous coronavirus would have been a reasonable excuse to give up. The people here today bear witness to the power of the Holy Spirit that never left our church. Like this mulberry tree, the code that is written into the DNA of every member triggered a response.
response to the tremendous challenges we've faced. New life is springing up in beautiful ways to the point that it can be hard to keep track of sometimes. We cannot ignore the evidence of the new life that's breaking through and flourishing right here in our church. It's a reason to celebrate. More than that, it's an invitation to let go of despair, cling to hope, and get to work clearing away the briars and brambles that try to rob the new life of the light that is shining on us. In short, the signs of life that are all around us point to reasons for recovering our trust in Jesus. God's vision for Thalia United Methodist Church in 2023 is living and loving like Jesus. Living and loving like Jesus looks like treating people like family by acting with kindness and devotion. That's how we embrace the work of the Holy Spirit in this year of Jubilee. We plant our feet firmly on the truth that living and loving like Jesus is what God is calling us to do right now. This is what is wired into our DNA as children of God who belong to this particular church family within the body of Christ. The way we live it out means we set our minds on Jesus and put our trust in the way He shows us how to live by loving God and one another. Jesus treats everyone like family by acting with kindness towards others and devotion to God. If we want to be the church that's living and loving like Jesus, then all we must do is treat people like family, show kindness, and practice devotion. Following this vision helps us aim better by saying yes to opportunities that fit and no to the ones that don't. The emphasis is not on doing more or less of any particular thing. The emphasis is focused on the intentional outcome. Every action is met with an equal and opposite reaction. What we do and don't do, whether it's done on purpose or not, has consequences. The reason we're focusing on God's vision is to make sure everything we do leads to the outcome we desire. The vision provides helpful boundaries to keep us from wasting time and energy. Instead of wasting valuable resources, the vision shows us where to channel our resources. So we have a choice. Give up and let nature run its course or plant our trust in God and keep living and loving like Jesus. If we take the more passive road, the outcome is pretty clear. One day this beautiful property on Thalia Creek next to Town Center won't be a house of worship. It would probably become a multi-use space with retail and parking. When we take the more active approach, the outcome will look more like the kingdom of God Jesus died and rose to make possible for us. Like the mulberry tree by the creek, new life will flourish from the roots up. In time, creatures great and small will taste the fruit and rest in its shade for generations to come. I'm glad to take this road with you living and loving like Jesus. If you want help finding your way around, let us know. We're here for you. Be sure to follow us on social media or sign up for our newsletters. We have a variety of ways to practice devotion and kindness. We can't wait to welcome you to the family at Thalia UMC. I'm Joe Varner, and I'm glad I get to be the senior pastor here. 
take care and God bless.